Okay. I hope your five minute break was quick as mine was. Like I told you this morning when I was starting to open our event, this year we were so lucky thanks to our Kenya connection and my sisters, Halima, Lorraine. We have a nurse, uh, as you guys know, on uh, Africa, especially East Africa, has the highest maternal infant mortality rate. And you know, Minnesota also has an African-American woman, and especially black woman, the, mater the infant mortality is 14%. So she's from the continent, East Africa, Kenya, where we have the highest infant and maternal mortality rate of, of African women. And we are in Minnesota today live talking to an expert in, in maternal child health, Halima, who's a nurse and the head of uh, many, many nurses in Kenya. Halima, I'm so glad you're here, Halima. Welcome, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Fartun. I'm so humbled to be here with you. Mine is a very small presentation. Thank you very much. I'm really humbled to be here. I'm speaking to you from Kenya in Eastern Africa. And my presentation today is on maternal and child health, especially by the bias is on maternal mortality. So this annual event celebrates the generational impact of African women and explores the issues concerning the health and well-being of African women and their communities. Um, I have some key findings on a report that was uh, shared of women's health in African region by WHO. African women bear an unacceptably huge burden of disease and death. There is underinvestment in women's health care, which is one of the many challenges to be overcome. There is also violence against women, which is an unacceptable degradation of women's rights. So a multisectoral approach is imperative to improve women's health. Women's socioeconomic empowerment is essential to achieve better health outcomes. So the harsh reality of a woman's life expectancy in African continent talks of the life expectancy at birth in more than 35 countries around the world is an upward of about 80 years. But in the African region, it is only 54 years according to the recent World Health Organization statistics. 99% of all maternal deaths that happen each year almost half a million in total occur in the developing countries, which Kenya sits in, many on the African continent. In fact, 61% of the maternal deaths happen in sub-Saharan Africa. We have some contributing factors to this, and I'm glad Isrun and also our senator was able to prove that high poverty rates among many African countries barriers to access to universal health care, including essential maternal and child health care services. In Africa, you can find a woman who is almost delivering, but she has no idea where she will get the services from, how she will get there. So they just depend on, sometimes they just say it is by God's fate if they survive. There is also dependence in terms of economic and social provisions. There is low education status among the Africans. So very many people are dependent on few people who are educated and who have an opportunity to take care of them. The ones who have no one to take care of them die with poverty. Then power play dynamics, decision-making among, among African cultures and communities where we have seen women being discriminated, women not being allowed to take leadership position. Then high illiteracy rates among girl child and women of Africa, where many African uh, want to marry off their daughters so that they can gain wealth instead of taking them to school. And then also gender discrimination and marginalization among African women. And probably just to tell uh, my people, the ones who are watching, something very unfortunate happened in my country in Kenya where a lady was involved in an accident and motorcycle riders 
went, they were groping her, they were almost stripping her naked, and no one raised a question, no one came out to protect that lady because she's a woman. So we should come out and always ensure that when one of us is getting hurt, when one of us is being discriminated, we come out as women and rise to the occasion and talk against that because we need our brothers, our fathers, our uncles to come out and protect us. They should not look at us as a weak agenda who are not able to take care of themselves. So maternal, uh, maternal mortality remains the biggest challenge in African content, like I said earlier. And WHO has renewed some targets and they have clearly defined five global and national targets for 2025 to end preventable maternal mortalities, which includes broad coalition of partners working in maternal and newborn health. And they have established new coverage targets and milestones that need to be achieved by 2025. So the, the, the five global targets include 90% of pregnant women to attend four or more antenatal care visits, towards increasing it to eight visits by 2030. 90% births to be attended by skilled health personnel. And when I talk of skilled health personnel, I'm talking about especially nurses and midwives who are found in the, from the lowest health facility to the highest health facility in any country. It is a nurse you will find at a dispensary, at a community, and even at a referral facility. So we need to ensure that our mothers are attended to by skilled nurses and midwives. 80% of women who have just been given birth uh, to access postnatal care within two days of delivery because we are getting mothers who are dying post delivery because they did not get the right care. Then the fourth one is 60% of the population to have access to emergency obstetric care within two hours of travel time. Remember, infrastructure in the African countries is a big problem. We need to rally the governments. Women need to come out. It is only us who can take care of women, who can ensure that women are not dying. Remember, when a woman dies, it is the whole community that suffers because we know the role a mother plays in the homestead. So we need to ensure that our women have access to emergency obstetric care within two hours of travel time. So that talks of well-equipped health facilities, well-remunerated healthcare workers, and especially nurses and midwives in the African countries who are not paid well, hence the morale towards work is very low. Then the last one is 65% of women to be able to make informed and empowered decisions regarding sexual relations, contraceptive use, and their productive health. This means that we are supposed to empower our girls, we are supposed to empower our women, and every woman in the world needs to know that there is a role we can play in leadership, there is a role we can play in empowering each other. As I conclude, we need to look at five things. We need to rethink service delivery to women with evidence-based approaches to addressing maternal health issues. We need to rethink healthcare policy in order to create an enabling environment for betterment of maternal health care. And I will not over, I will overemphasize on the fact that we need to pay our healthcare workers well so that they are able to take care of our community. And when I talk of healthcare workers, my emphasis is nurses and midwives who are found at the lowest healthcare facilities. We also need to rethink our social attitudes towards men. And this is to our brothers, to our fathers. Let's look at women as leaders. Let's look at women as equal partners who have some contributions to ensure that the, the health care of humanity is maintained. We also need to rethink women's right to health. Let's take care of our women. Let's prioritize. Let's ensure we have equipped health facilities. And finally, we need to rethink the connections between women's health and socioeconomic development because women are very good at multitasking and they can take care of us. And when they take care of us, they will take care of the world. Thank you so much, uh, Fartun, for giving me this opportunity. God bless you. I hope I have been of great help to the people who are listening today. Thank you so much. Halima, my goodness, my sister, you just 
talked as you were talking to Minnesota, you're talking African women and, and, and what the disparities and the way you talked about the underpaid, the lack of cultural specific. We should have a whole session, you and I, talking about the parallel between the, are you, what you're talking about back home and the, and the disparities of black and indigenous women here in America, in Minnesota. I see Somali women who are almost nine, nine months about to have a baby that when I ask them, hey, what is your, have you checked your, have you been to a doctor, say what doctor? I had five kids in Indian uh, refugee camp and I never went to see a doctor. What we're then seeing is them going into C-section uh, because of female genital cutting, they end up in having you know, C-section and depression and so a whole different cultural pieces that is missing. So what you just talked about today is, is not only amazing is that I see us here in Minnesota and you, um, my sisters in the continent, in Kenya and elsewhere, we need to be uniting because we, as a black and African woman, I've been talking about the indigenous and African women here in America, in Minnesota, we have the strength to serve our families and our sisters, but we are underfunded, undervalued, by even like we, we are at the bottom of the barrier and then now we have to get and rely on the international NGOs to give breadcrumbs and say, oh, here's a 40,000, here's a 10,000, but it's never addressing what you're talking about is a socioeconomic connect between health and socioeconomic development. So I am so grateful that you said yes, and we will be in touch. Stay around, stay really around. Thank I you. am so grateful, Halima. Thank you. Thank you. I'm grateful too. Thank you so much. Yes. And happy too. International Women's Day to everyone, every woman in the world. Thank you. Thank you so much. By the way, you look beautiful and the, the picture behind Thank you is you. Like, so cultured. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Halima. I know it's kind of late Thank for you, you over so there, but much. stay awake, please. We'll wait now next I will. Week. I will. I will. Thank All you right. so much. God bless. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, everyone. My name is Yusra Arab, um, and I'm here at 